As the shadows of life lengthen and the pace of the world grows ever more hurried, a quiet truth reveals itself, the company we keep in old age matters profoundly. In the stillness of maturity, the heart no longer seeks noise but understanding, not crowds but peace. There is a Zen saying, to carry water for too many is to spill your own. This wisdom suggests that as life wanes, our energy and attention must be carefully preserved, lest they be drained by the unnecessary burdens of others. In this teaching, we will unravel the profound reasons why one must choose solitude and simplicity in old age. Not as an act of isolation but as a sacred return to oneself. Through this story, deeply rooted in Zen and Buddhist philosophy, you will find both clarity and peace in the path of letting go of excessive social entanglements, the arrival of wisdom. Once, there was an elderly sage who lived atop a quiet hill. His days were filled with tranquil meditation, the rustling of leaves, and the soft songs of the wind. As he aged, he withdrew from the bustling towns and the countless faces that once surrounded him. Many wondered why a man so wise and kind would avoid people, especially as his years grew shorter. One day, a curious seeker came to him, eager for answers. Master, the seeker asked, why do you sit here alone when the world is filled with people who love you and seek your counsel? Do you not feel lonely? The sage smiled softly and gestured for the seeker to sit beside him. Loneliness, the sage began, is not cured by company but by contentment. And in old age, it is not the multitude of voices that sustains us, but the silence within. Let me explain why I choose this solitude, the weight of relationships. The sage looked at the young seeker and asked, Have you ever carried water in a clay pot? Yes, the seeker replied, And what happens when you fill the pot too much, it cracks and spills, the seeker answered, the sage nodded. In our younger years, we are like that pot. We can carry the weight of relationships, responsibilities, and the expectations of others. But as we age, the clay becomes brittle. If we continue to carry too much, we risk breaking ourselves. Old age is a time to lighten the load, he continued, many people, knowingly or unknowingly, demand more from the elderly. They bring their troubles, their expectations, and their chaos, leaving little room for the elder's peace. By avoiding unnecessary relationships, we honor the limited energy we have and preserve it for what truly matters, our inner growth, the noise of the world. The sage then told a story of a large pond. There was a pond, he began, so serene that it reflected the sky perfectly. But every time people gathered around it, throwing stones and stirring its waters, its surface became distorted. Only when the people left, and the waters were still, did the pond regain its clarity, in old age, he said, we are like that pond. The presence of too many people creates noise, ripples in the mind. Their opinions, dramas, and distractions cloud our inner peace. Solitude allows the waters of our mind to settle, and in that stillness, we see ourselves clearly. Without this clarity, we lose the final opportunity to understand life's deeper truths, the danger of attachment. The seeker, intrigued, asked, but isn't it natural to want companionship? Aren't relationships what make life meaningful? The sage agreed but offered a cautionary tale. There was once a bird, he began, that lived in a golden cage. The cage was gifted to the bird by its loving companions. They fed it, cared for it, and admired its beauty. But over time, the bird forgot how to fly, and when the cage door was opened, it stayed inside, 
too afraid to leave, he paused, letting the story sink in. Companionship can often become a golden cage. As we grow older, we must ensure that our attachments do not bind us, preventing us from soaring into the freedom of our own being. True love and friendship do not demand our constant presence or energy. They allow space for us to thrive, even in solitude, the preciousness of time. The sage continued, in youth, we believe we have endless time. We squander it on trivial matters, on pleasing everyone, and on running in circles for others. But in old age, time becomes a treasure. Every moment is an opportunity to reflect, to meditate, and to prepare for the great journey beyond, he added, when we fill our days with the noise of others, we lose this sacred time. Avoiding unnecessary company is not selfishness, it is wisdom. It is the realization that our final years are not for distraction but for devotion, devotion to understanding the truths of life and death, the power of inner peace. The seeker asked, but what if people think you are abandoning them? What if they judge you? The sage smiled and replied, a tree does not explain why it sheds its leaves in autumn. It simply knows that it is necessary for its survival. Similarly, in old age, we must shed the unnecessary, not out of malice but out of love for ourselves. Those who truly care for us will understand, those who do not understand are not worth the energy, he continued, inner peace is the greatest gift we can give ourselves and others. When we are peaceful, our presence becomes a beacon of calm for those who visit us. But if we allow ourselves to be consumed by the chaos of others, we lose that gift, the wisdom of letting go. The sage then spoke of a final lesson, letting go, in our younger years, he said, we are taught to hold on, hold on to relationships, achievements, and possessions. But in old age, wisdom lies in letting go. Let go of grudges, let go of expectations, and yes, let go of people who drain your energy. This is not an act of bitterness but of liberation, he added, when you let go, you create space, space for peace, for reflection, and for the divine. This space is the doorway to enlightenment, the seeker's realization. The seeker sat in silence, absorbing the sage's words. Master, he finally said, I see now that avoiding people in old age is not about rejecting them but about embracing oneself. It is about finding the strength to prioritize peace over chaos, clarity over confusion, the sage nodded, his eyes filled with kindness. Exactly, my child. Solitude is not loneliness. It is the ultimate act of self-love and respect. In this stillness, we return to the essence of who we are. The seeker, now deeply moved, asked, Master, how can one prepare for this solitude early in life? Is there a way to cultivate this wisdom before old age arrives? The sage smiled knowingly and began to share further insights, planting the seeds of solitude early. The journey to finding peace in solitude does not begin in old age, the sage explained. It begins much earlier, when we learn to appreciate silence and self-reliance in the midst of life's busyness. Let me share another story with you, there was once a farmer who had two fields. In one, he planted crops that depended on constant care and irrigation. In the other, he let wildflowers and sturdy trees grow, needing little from him. When a drought came, the crops withered, but the trees and wildflowers thrived, for they had grown strong on their own. The sage paused, then said, if you cultivate relationships and habits that demand constant attention, you will struggle when life's challenges arise. But if you foster independence, self-awareness, 
and a love for solitude, you will find yourself resilient when old age comes. Begin by spending time alone each day, reflecting on your thoughts and actions. This will prepare your heart for the stillness of later years, recognizing true companionship. Does this mean we should avoid all people, Master? The seeker asked. Not at all, the sage replied. Life is enriched by genuine connections. But these are rare and precious. True companionship does not drain you, it nourishes you. It is like the warmth of the sun, offered freely and without expectation. Seek relationships where silence is as comfortable as words, where presence alone brings peace, he added, in old age, it is better to have a handful of true companions than a crowd of superficial ones. Quality, not quantity, is what sustains us. And sometimes, the best companion is your own soul, the balance between solitude and community. The seeker then inquired, but isn't there value in serving others, even in old age? Should we not give back to the world? The sage nodded thoughtfully. Indeed, service is a noble path. But it must be balanced with self-care. In Zen teachings, there is a concept of right action, doing what is needed without overburdening oneself, in old age, serve others not out of obligation but out of joy. If helping someone disrupts your peace or drains your energy, it is better to step back. Remember, a candle that burns itself out cannot light another. Serve from a place of abundance, not sacrifice, the illusion of loneliness. The sage continued, many fear solitude because they mistake it for loneliness. But loneliness arises not from being alone, but from being disconnected from oneself. When you cultivate a relationship with your inner being, you will find that solitude is the most fulfilling companionship. He looked at the seeker and said, close your eyes. Listen to the silence around you. Can you hear the whispers of your own heart? In that silence lies the answer to every question, the resolution to every doubt. That is why in old age it is essential to withdraw, not to abandon others, but to embrace yourself preparing for the final journey, the seeker then asked, and what of death, master? How does avoiding people in old age help us face it, the sage grew solemn but serene. Death is the ultimate solitude, the return to the eternal stillness. If you have spent your life clinging to noise, distractions, and the validation of others, the silence of death will terrify you. But if you have embraced solitude and found peace within, death will feel like a homecoming, he continued, old age is a sacred time to prepare for this transition. By withdrawing from the chaos of the world, you can focus on understanding life's impermanence, forgiving yourself and others, and connecting with the divine. This preparation is not a rejection of life but a deeper acceptance of its fleeting nature, the seeker's transformation. As the sun began to set, the seeker felt a profound shift within. The sage's words were not just teachings, they were a call to action, a reminder to live with intention and wisdom, Master, the seeker said, I understand now. Solitude is not something to fear, but something to embrace. In old age, it is a gift, a time to rediscover oneself and prepare for the next chapter, the sage smiled, his eyes glimmering with approval. You have seen the truth. Go now and live it. Begin today by creating moments of stillness, by valuing your time, and by choosing peace over noise. When old age comes, you will find yourself ready, content, free, and at peace with the world, the teachings of Zen and Buddhist philosophy remind us that life is a journey toward simplicity, and old age is the final stretch where this simplicity becomes paramount. 
By avoiding unnecessary entanglements, we do not reject the world but honor our limited energy and sacred time. This wisdom is not about loneliness or abandonment, it is about prioritizing inner peace, understanding the impermanence of life, and preparing for the ultimate return to stillness. As the sage said, in solitude, we find ourselves. In ourselves, we find the universe, so, as you walk through the seasons of life, remember to treasure your inner peace. Let go of the unnecessary, embrace the stillness, and when the time comes, enter old age not with fear, but with grace and profound joy. Thanks for watching. Hope enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Just click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next. See you in the next video.